Photo Express Viewer is one of the best Adobe Bridge alternative. I guess that already answers what this video about. Yes, we are talking about a fantastic software to show and organize thousands of photographs in your hard drive or whatever medium you have to store your photos. This software can help you to tag, mark, organize, batch rename, everything. So, and also it is, as I mentioned earlier, a fantastic alternative of Adobe Bridge if you're looking for one of the alternative anyway. So let's jump into the video and show you how this software works. First of all, this software shows thousands of photos, raw images specifically, at a very high speed. If I scroll down, you can see that there are no lags in between to load the images. You have to remember, these days the images are bigger and bigger and bigger, especially if you are shooting photos with the camera at higher megapixels, such as the Nikon's 36 or 45 megapixels uh, images, or you can go as far as the Hasselblad, the medium format. Those files can be really huge and takes a lot of time to load. And if you're like me, who love to take a lot of photos, it takes time to load. And this software can handle them beautifully only because the software actually use the graphics card to show your images, which is very, very efficient. And not to mention, it's practically support almost all the raw files available in the market, including TIFF and JPEG which is brilliant. Second thing it does is marking your images. And of course that is very, very important at the beginning of your editing because you want to organize your photos first before you go through thousands of images after a wedding or a holiday. In that case, for example, you can select the photos that you want to edit and you can go at the bottom and tag them with different colors that can be green, red, yellow, or blue. I think you have here one, two, three, four, five tags. And then you have the love mark if you want to, like something that you really, really like, you can tag them with that. And you also tag them with stars, one star, two, five star. For instance, I'm just going to go to that photo of Athens and then give it a five star only because the, this is one of the coolest photo that we have taken. So definitely that worth a five star and then later I can go back and revisit just with the filter. We are gonna get into it a little bit later, hang into it. So I'm going to do, I'm going to like mark some of the images and then later we're going to revisit them so that we know exactly what we are looking at. Now third thing it does is the filter. I think this is the star of this software. The reason behind, imagine you have many photos from different camera, different focal length, different ISOs, and different almost everything. You can start from the date to day to time to different lenses and cameras. And how you are going to figure out which one you used and how you're going to find them out. You can use that filter button right there and that will bring up this little box and then you can click OK and whether you can add a file name if you have one. For instance, in my example, at the top of the photograph, I have my photos named. So you can use them if you want to. Or, or and, you have four options so you can really pinpoint your photographs. For instance, in this case, I'm going to get rid of the file name and instead, I'm going to use the ISO speed first and then even to be more specific, I'm going to add focal length. Now, when it comes to ISO speed or focal length, you have option of equal to or more or less, greater than or less than. So obviously th this gives away what they mean. So equal to means if you add like 200, for instance, it will, you'll be looking for a photo exactly at 200. And then it can be a bit more variable. For example, it can go for anything more than 200 or less than 200, greater than 200 or less than 200. In this case, we're going to stay at 200 only. And then in the focal length, we are going to stay at 18. So I'm going to add 18 right there. 
And then I'm going to click search. And now I have images that are equal to 200 ISO. You can clearly see at the bottom of the images, you have all the information and all the focal length are at 18 mm. So all the images are here are taken at 18 mm focal length. So that is pretty awesome and very convenient to look for your photos, obviously, if you have thousands of them. I can click clear to get rid of all the peripheric and close it down. Although, if you're not happy with this little filter button, I have a better option for you. Right next to it, you have this one, the other filter. So you must be wondering, like, what is the difference between that tiny one and this one there? What is the point of having both of them? Now, I just showed you what this one does, the search. So search is different than filter. In filter, I'm gonna bring it right over here so that you have a little bit of contrast on white background. Now, in filter, you have a number of options. The file name, extension, ISO, f-stop, focal length, comment, date, camera model, lens, shutter speed, orientation, user mark, and rating. Now, let's show you in this big amount of photograph, I have Fuji camera, Panasonic, smartphone, and Canon 70D, including some photos from even GoPro. And now this is where the fun begins. Now, what if you want to just select all the photos taken with the Canon? Now you can do that, for instance, by selecting the camera model and quickly you have all the three cameras available. That is freaking awesome. Now, you know, I just changed my mind. I'm going to select Fuji X-T20. Beam. All of a sudden, I have all the four photos taken with the Fuji X-T20. Now, why this is important? If you're a professional, you know exactly why it's important. In my case, suppose I just want to tag all of them by controlling Control A, selecting all of them first. And then suppose I want to use the beautiful Fuji film film simulation in silky Peaks developer studio pro so i'm going to give it a like a little love button and now when you have silky Peaks developer studio pro it will synchronize automatically with the software that you tagged love button then you officially know that this is taken with the fuji film and you want to change with your desired film simulation. Can be Kodachrome, can be Fuji Acros. So that's just one of the example. Now I want to change to Canon 70D. Now in Canon 70D, if I personally remember, I use two different lenses. One lens is Sigma 18 to 35. The second one, the Canon EF 70 to 200 F4. Now I want to separate them one at a time because both lenses are very different from each other. One is telephoto, one is wide angle. Now what I'm gonna do, I'm going to start with the focal length. Suppose I'm going to add right there and then it's going to do a little thing and you have a bunch of list. You have 18 mm, 25 mm, 35 mm, 200 mm. Now I'm going to stick with 18 mm. Now again, again, select all of them with control A and tag it with anything. This time it could be like red, for instance. So you selected all of them in red. And then again, you can go back, you can change to 200 mm. And you have only one photo selected. That can be anything else, could be like this color, or you can right click it, change the name of this photo to anything else, you can click a star, you can tag it any way you prefer. That is awesome. That's just one of the few things you can do. So that is what I mean. Like you have a bunch of photo, I'm going to clear all of it right now. By clearing means that you can go back to all and it will bring back all of it. Now, you see what I just did there. This is amazing. So you can select camera models, a date, F number, ISO, and it can organize itself so much better. It is incredible. This is going to be one of my most used tool of this software.
All right, let's fix this photo quickly because I think that needs to be fixed is angle. So I'm gonna just click the rotation. Well, there you go. Now, here's an interesting and also personally to me a super awesome function of this software, which is these two button at the top left corner. So one button it says copy selected images and second one, the move selected images. For the simplicity, we're gonna go at the top. Now, I have this photo of, I'm just going to make the thumbnail bigger so that you can see exactly what is going on. Now, I have this photo inside Chateau Versailles. Now, this photo, what I want to do, let's say it happened to be in one of the hard drive of this folder, now I want to move it to somewhere else, wherever you know, basically doing a copy and paste. So you can copy this photo right from here, whatever hard drive or folder you have, or a bunch of photo, such as, I'm gonna select all of it at the same time. And now, if I click copy selected images, and now all of a sudden you have this box. Now here, of course, you have the navigation uh, box, and let's say you have another hard drive connected to your computer or um, you know your internal hard drive. I have this photo, this folder ready. So I want to move the copy the images here in copy image folder, and I click OK. And if I click the copy images, now you have all the images right there. Pretty awesome, isn't it? Look at that. We go to our previous folder where we have all our images. Now you managed to copy your desired images from the main folder, wherever it is, and managed to paste it somewhere else right from there without having to do a copy and then navigate, 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 and then go somewhere else completely. You can even, let's do it again, click it, and let's say you don't have a folder already in any hard drive, in anywhere in your computer. So you can navigate to another folder. Let's say I have a local disk K and click this little create new folder button and paste it directly there. Pretty cool, isn't it? So that's one of the coolest um, function. Now, second one, you just want to move them. And that is important when you want to move it like from your SD card, let's say this folder right now, currently we are, that's your SD card. Now you want to move your photo from SD card to somewhere else, and that is probably, you obviously gonna do it anyway, right? So instead of moving them manually by going through the navigation folder in your C drive, you have your software open already, and you can click all the image. For instance, I'm gonna do Control a, all the image are selected. I'm gonna show you exactly that I've selected all of it. And click it, this button right there, says move selected images. We gotta do that. And I have a folder ready already for convenience, says move images. So I'm going to click it. If you don't have it, again, you can click this little button, says create new folder. And of course, then click Okay, give some time and all the images going to be moving from wherever folder you are currently to whatever folder you have selected. Now they, they got nothing there, it's all gone. Now we're gonna go to the move image folder and there you go, all the tags, all the changes you have done are there already. This is phenomenal. Personally though, my personal recommendation, you don't have to take it as a serious advice, but for extra security, instead of doing move images, I personally recommend you to use copy images instead. What happened, just in case, God forbid, if there is a the function, I don't know, while you're moving them, the power shut down or your hard drive corrupted, anything can happen. Nothing is permanent anymore these days. In that case, you are halfway through and you probably may lose your photo. It, happen, it can happen anytime, anywhere. So instead of that, I personally recommend you to do copy images instead of move images. But then again, once you've done your proper backup, 
you can do move images if you want to. Moving on to the next part. Now, there is another thing which is super awesome, which is when you have the software on already, imagine that you have a camera full of photograph in your SD card. So if you turn on this software, and if you insert your SD card into the computer, it will automatically ask you to import the photos directly from your SD card, which is one of the most important function of any kind of software, specifically when you want to organize your images. And in order to do that, you have two options. One, you can manually do that. So the top left corner, you have import from media button. So that's one of the buttons that you can use and that will bring on these boxes. Generally, that's a manual version that should work automatically if just in case the automatic part is not working. Although, don't forget, go to the settings and then function settings and tick this box. Launch the import from media dialog when inserting a removable disk and that should do the job super easily. And obviously when you want to go through the photos you have many many options. Let's get rid of this one. Now we can close this box. So you have the thumbnail option as you can clearly see. Now if you want to verify the photos side by side you have option number one. So obviously you can go through the photo one after another. You can click the arrow button on your keyboard to go one photos to other. Now you can change that to other one so that your small thumbnail version goes on the left hand side. And you have the full screen version. You have the side by side version, which is very vertical. So in this case, what you can do, we can click, let's say the MP version, click it and click any button and that should bring any photos. And I can compare photos side by side. And obviously you have the other option, which is this one. So horizontal, that will, that depends totally up to you. If you like the horizontal or vertical, use it whatever convenient for you, which is brilliant in my case, because I can use any way I like to compare photos side by side. Now, also you have the full screen preview, obviously. Now full screen preview, you can do two photos at a time, just like now, or you can go back to the single version and click full screen preview and that should bring the full screen version. Now, here's the question. You don't see a button for zooming in and out a photo, which is also a very important function, obviously, if you are looking at the details of an image at 100% zoom, 50% zoom or so on. What you can do, you can click shift and up down like that and that should zoom 100% 50% as you prefer. Now you can change the shortcut key of anything including zooming in and out by going to settings and then shortcut key settings and there you go you have this shortcut list where you can not only change the shortcut key for zooming in and out a image but you can basically change everything. So change it the way you prefer. For example, if you added, if you used to use Adobe Lightroom, for instance, or anything that you used to use, you can exactly copy all this keyboard setting and bring it over here so that you don't get confused, which is very, very convenient. Now, of course, in the thumbnail mode, you can change the size of your thumbnail, especially if you want to look at the higher resolution. So if you're like me, like in this folder, I have about more than 200 images. And you can clearly see that how fast is it to bring it bigger or smaller, which is super awesome. And then obviously, if you want to take a quick look at the details of your image, for instance, the metadata, obviously one of the most important part of any image, you can click an image, any image. On the right hand side, you have histogram already. So you can take a look and then let's say you want to change the shadow of this image. So you can click and tag mark of any color of your choice. And you can take a look at what camera has been taken 
and you can also change the metadata by double clicking and change anything you like which is very very important when it comes to metadata management of an image i personally use that a lot so you basically practically change and put your name to protect your image as well now another important function of this software obviously one of the most important in my opinion is batch renaming now in this case let's make all the photos smaller maybe a slightly bigger so that you can see the words and then you can select the image that you want to change the name right click and when you right click it you should have a button that says batch rename just like that and now you can change the name as you prefer one of the most useful function of any software so i personally highly recommend to use that a lot if you want to be very very organized and put a name or based on location based on date based on an event based on for example someone's wedding or birthday you get the idea now here's another interesting settings that you can change in this software for example if you have a specific monitor with a specific color profile for instance this laptop is srgb but you can go to the settings go to display settings and change the color profile based on anything here you have adobe rgb pro photo color match or srgb pro photo is obviously one of those very specific monitors if you have one you can change it to pro, pro, pro photo rgb and then you also can change some other stuff for example you can change the size of a thumbnail and you can either change the priority which is the speed priority or image quality priority which means if you change it to speed priority the quality of the thumbnail will go lower but it will be so fast that depends on the speed and ram and processor of your computer but if you change it if you have a good computer with the high specs it can change it to image quality priority so that it can look at the photo at higher resolution now of course there is another one that i personally use a lot just in case if you have a photo that is not rotated properly it can change the rotation and it can also turn on the grid to make sure to verify if your photo is well leveled or not anyway so personally do i like it absolutely and you can also select a photo go to the file and right click it and you can directly open in any other application who knows you could be using a silky pix developer studio pro photoshop lightroom or affinity photo you can register the application and open it directly into that application right from here and if you want to download and try the software you can obviously go to the silky pigs website and download a trial version and see it for yourself and the original price doesn't cost that much generally around 14 euro at this time of the special price and i highly recommend you to go try it out i hope you like it and i hope you like this video if so please like and subscribe and i'll see you in future videos take care of yourself bye bye